So what they, uh, as I said, offers different solutions like your human capital management, your financials, your grants, your federal, all those areas, right? Payroll, budgeting and planning, absence management, and many more. So if you want to check which solution is enabled in our tenant, which we have subscribed to, and which one is not, okay? So there is a report called functional area. The report name is functional area. So if you run this report, the first column tells you about the solution name. If it is a worker student, HCM, financials, and many more. You can see there are more than 100 items here. Then this solution is further divided into a functional area. For example, finance would be divided into your procurement, your customer, your supplier, your assets, your banking settlement, reporting, and so on. If you type financials here or finance, that's not there. So, if we talk about these core financials, under core financials, we have this solutions like expenses, grant, procurement, workday payroll, and all those things. Then the solutions are further divided into a functional area. So, you can imagine like workday solution is at the top. Beneath that, you have a functional area and a functional area is further divided into a domain and a business process. And if you want to check if that functional area or solution is enabled or not, you can look at this column here. Yes. If this is marked as yes, it means this solution is enabled in this tenant. We can use this functionality of financials, procurement, grants, customer accounts, and so on. Clear? This is how you check it. But suppose we'll talk about this domain and business process in coming like few minutes from now. Uh, after taking a five to ten minute break, five seven minutes break. But right now, suppose you want to say, okay, I want to enable one more function area, or I want to enable one more solution in this tenant. Although you have to pay a fees for that. Without paying fees, you cannot get it enabled. This is uh, like a partner from tenant, so everything is enabled here for their consultants to do practice and everything. But in the real world, certain things would be prohibited here. Until and unless you don't pay workday, you would not be able to use them. Clear? Yes. You have to pay a subscription fee, only then you would be able to use so it. So even though you are saying even the administrator who has the administrator role, he needs to pay for each module. Not administrator, the company. Yeah, I mean, whoever is the consultant, he, and even if he is the administrator, like he is the consultant, he needs access for each of these modules, modules like core financial expenses, grants, and everything, right? By default, implementer or consultants, okay, gets access to each and every module, what you're seeing right now. Okay. But employees will have only very selected domain or business process access. We'll talk about that. Uh, we have enough time. Then, then you say employees, it is the end user. Like we end have user, it in. Yes. Yeah, okay, understood. Got your point. Yeah. Okay. Now, if you want to enable something that we have paid for, the report name is maintain functional area. Or task is maintain functional area. So we go here. And whatever is not enabled, you will click on this checkbox and that will get enabled in the tenant. You would be able to use it later on once you click OK here. Fine. And with that, this domain and business process will also be available for us to use in the tenant.
But first, you have to come here, and even before that, you have to pay to Workday to get the services of this particular solution. Now let's talk about domains and a business process. What is the difference between a domain and a business process? There's a brief like two pages description in the PDF file, which I've shared with you, but in crux, I'll tell you what it is. A business process is a process which gets completed after certain steps of actions, reviews and approvals. Let me go back and take the same example of supplier invoice. That somebody would initiate a supplier invoice. They would create a supplier invoice in the system, right? For example, AP data entry analyst, whose work is just to key in the data for the supplier invoice. But it's a matter of money going out of your pocket because we are, have to pay to suppliers. So we have to be very sure that the data has been entered is correct. Be it the purchase item which we have purchased, spend category on which we are spending the money to Okay, the company, the supplier name, the payment terms, all these details. The data entry specialist or data entry analyst has entered the data, but somebody at the higher level from his profile would review it first. For example, accounts payable manager. Once he submit the invoice, that will go to his manager for review and approval. If the transaction value is more than like $10,000 or $20,000, depends company to company, then it will go to one higher level called regional accounts payable specialist. If it is again more than $50,000, I'm just taking the numbers here. It can be anything. Then it will go to a CEO or CFO approval to approve the transaction, which later on can be processed to the supplier as a payment. So that is called a process. It starts and it ends in between. There are certain action items which needs to get completed or by someone in the business. It can be your AP manager, accounting manager, air specialist, air manager, anything based on the transaction to transaction. But clear with this information, what is a business process? It gets initiated and it gets reviewed, approved and gets completed. It's a cycle. But whereas a domain is just one single task that finding customer invoices for company. That is just one single task. Like I just want to find some data that is not related to a business process at all. It just information I'm trying to find out in the system. I'm not trying to hit submit something or configure something in the system or to do some transaction. I'm trying to find out some data for my own purpose or for own slicing and the data. That is called domain. And you get access of that particular report access from these domains, okay? For certain tasks, the access from domains and for certain tasks from business process. You'll see that in chapter five in detail, but right now in one word, just understand that domain is just a one-time activity that you do, whereas process is a continuous activity. You create supplier invoices on daily basis. You apply them on daily basis. It doesn't stop. It's part of your day-to-day -day profile. May look heavy gyan today, but later on, once you're familiar with the concept and everything, you will not have that much difficulty to understand this data or this flow. But any questions about the business process cycle and domains or functional areas? It is very well written in the PDF file, but I'm in Kirk's, I'm telling you, no need to go through those two pages, three pages. In Kirk's, I'm telling you, that understand business process as a cycle, because when I initiate something, okay, it will get end also. But before it ends, it will be reviewed, actioned and approved by someone else also. Not by me, but someone else also. That is called a business process, a complete cycle. Whereas domain is just a one single time activity that we do in order to find some data, find some person, find some information, that's all. Clear? Yes. 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 Okay. Perfect.